First of all, I, of course, would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to Budapest. Uh, it's really a great, great pleasure to come to this part of Europe uh, and to come to this uh, spring uh, that we see outside of the lecture halls. Uh, Sweden is still uh, almost uh, winter time and see the green trees and the green grass, it's, it's really lovely. And I also have to thank the organizers for a very well uh, organized uh, meeting so far. I have the privilege of talking a little bit about patient information in day surgery. And I should start directly to say that this is not rocket science. Uh, I have no intention to uh, search for the Nobel Prize uh, based on this lecture. Uh, this is more a lecture based on, on our mindset and, and a little bit that I would like to move our mindset to a thinking about information in terms of patients or actually ordinary citizens uh, coming, seeing us, uh, and they are rather nervous. And I think this is perhaps one of the most important parts in information in day surgery. Uh, we are more, all facing an increased demand, an increased demand of producing. And that calls for a need among us to accept that our time with the patients is rather limited and that the patients in most instances are rather nervous and may not actually recall everything that we say. Uh, it's no doubt that day surgery or ambulatory surgery or going home more or less the same day of surgery is increasing. Uh, these are just the Swedish numbers. Uh, it says something, I think, though, and it, it says that uh, in some countries where we reach some percentage of 60, 65, perhaps 70 percent, uh, day surgery probably plateau. Uh, what's important about the preoperative information? It should, of course, uh, be very much focused on the surgical procedure. I'm an anesthetist, so why am I called to have this lecture? It can really be asked. Uh, and I think this is, again, a fundamental part, that they should be informed about the procedure, very much explicit, what's going to be done and also informed about the procedure, what is the expected outcome? And this is of importance both from a pure information point of view, but also very important from a medical legal point of view. Uh, most of us have sometimes occasionally been doing private practice. And a patient that comes out of surgery not having the experience that they were informed about may indeed complain, and this may have medical legal aspects. And I do think it's very wise in most situations to try to have an informed consent, possibly in, uh, in Britain. Then comes the postoperative information in general. And of course, if you are to leave hospital within hours after surgery, this information is very much focused on self-care. You have to take care of yourself or someone near to you needs to take care of you. So the preoperative phase and the preoperative information, the information about the preoperative phase, uh, that's about logistics come to the right door, enter the right part. If you're a man, you should go to the men's dressing room and not to the female's dressing room. Uh, maybe stupid, but it's important because if the patient goes wrong, they will delay the process, they will delay the logistics, and they will delay our lean production that most of us focus on. And again, uh, a small booklet, including a map, a dedicated map with everything from the parking lot to the elevators to the right dressing room, etc., is of huge importance if we could have, should have this as a smooth ride. And remember now, now that uh, 
preoperative information is a dual communication. It's us, healthcare provider, providers providing patients with information. And then in the opposite direction is the patient that should inform us, healthcare providers, about their medical history. And this is definitely a dual communication where our ears should be up, open, taking in the information, but also we should inform patients where we have to acknowledge that they take in our information. So again, very basically, of course, all of us or most of us uses questionnaires where patients in uh, a quiet resting environment at home um, during a coffee break at work provide us with their information. Uh, some centers have started to use this e uh, e by email or web-based. I can see a tiny amount of security and medical legal aspects if it's out on the web. BADS has a questionnaire and I think you recognize a similar layout in your own country. It's basic, we want to have information from the patient, so this is the direction from patient to us. And there are today numerous examples, and I was so happy when I walked the uh, poster area this morning, because there were three posters addressing these pre-operative information possibilities. There was just a lovely film for the children and parents' information. And I think today that most of us do use some form of standardized paper. But I do uh, encourage you also to use a video or a web-based uh, tool to do that. Have we changed attitudes? Are we easy to teach? Are healthcare providers open for changes? No. I don't know any category of workers that are so conservative as doctors in special. We like to stick to what we learned in medical school and we are not that interested in changes. Uh, we have tried to follow our national practices. We have asked our different hospitals how they manage in an environment where we expect them to move on and come into new practices. And we see fairly small changes. Again, coming back to most important part, informed consent. You may argue that our patients for the minor surgical procedure, they are ASA 1 to 2, and it may not be that important of gaining extensive information about their health. It may be well taken doing that only by phone, calling them, asking a nurse, to gain the information from the patient to the healthcare. But again, I think it's of importance that patients should also have the time to ask questions, to respond, have responses on their specific uh, interests. BADS, again, has been one of the organizations uh, that has helped us other to create documents and uh, routines uh, for our uh, day surgery. And they explicitly state as point number one, educating patient about day surgery, surgery pathway. And I like this, I like this educational mindset. It's not only, ed it's not only information, it's actually changing an attitude among the patients. They shouldn't expect to have the first class hotel service for three days. No, on the contrary, they, they will be sent home with a box of pills and by the best some um, wound dressing for their own sake to change. So again, it's mandatory that we provide them, from us to them, information, and on the contrary, that we listen to them to identify medical uh, issues from their side. Good quality advice leaflets, again, written information, verbal information to a subject patient, nervous, in a little bit of a time stress situation, no good. 
There should be documents and things should be signed as far as ever possible. Procedure-specific information, again, cut paste from one of BAD's uh, information leaflets. This was a tonsillectomy. And I think we should be very transparent. We should be extraordinarily transparent. We, we should provide information about the benefits, but also the risks. No doubt, the patient should have all what's in it. The risk for bleeding, the risk for infections, and where to go when things go pear-shaped. This is very basic. We have been living with this Professor Kielet Diamond for 20 years. So the concept is very, very simple and, again, well known. And again, already 20 years ago, Professor Kielet started his diamond with preoperative information and teaching. He's provocative. He suggested growth hormone. And I don't know if that's the right way to go, but nonetheless, starting up early front uh, to inform patients. And there are enormous lot amount out on the web. We use the web when we are looking for an air flight to Budapest or trying to find our way to the church tonight. Indeed, so of course patients use the web. And there are definitely uh, public information, there are excellent uh, video shots on how to become an atroscopic surgeon. I don't know if, we, if I would manage after the first look, but after the second look, I would definitely try to make an attempt to take away a menisc. So that's free of charge. And again, you can't sort of find the end of the line on how to construct these things. There can be animations, there can be uh, videotapes, and I think that uh, the cartoon people uh, from the, the uh, video games uh, can help us a lot. And again, just use your imagination to go to it. And remember, if you take this very expected thing, like post-operative pain, most of the issue about post-operative pain that's day two, day three, day four after surgery. So again, if we don't inform and provide the patients with adequate information about pain medication, of course we will have a quality issue. Preoperative assessment centers, and again, I prepared these slides already actually Saturday morning uh, in good time for this meeting, and I was so happy when I was walking again the poster area this morning because there were, again, three or four posters this morning presenting different logistics, as, uh, suggesting that a center where patients can come, come in advance and talk to different uh, healthcare providers uh, were, of, uh, were of value. We did a, a small study uh, looking at the multidisciplinary preoperative center to look at how much time spent, what was the patient satisfaction, what did they sort of find uh, were a benefit uh, having these time to see different uh, um, nurses, doctors, and other specialists. And they actually very much appreciate it. And again, we should inform and teach our patients not only about the early uh, postoperative period, but actually more protective, protective, protective uh, period. Convalescence, this, ta this takes a month. This usually takes a month. So we have to teach our patients to be pre uh, prepared to take care of their own care in the home environment. And they should be av uh, aware of that there are huge limitations of activities of daily living when they leave the hospital. Things around sick leave should be absolutely ready and prepared. And remember, this is a preoperative pathway. I like that word from the BAS uh, information leaflet. Initial consultation, decision, preoperative information comes early. Waiting for surgery, day of surgery, discharge, and not the same thing as street fit, early recovery, and then all the time when it, before you come back to uh, ordinary activities or daily living. 
So again, day of surgery is just a small part of the entire pathway. The diamond started up with preoperative information and teaching. Wound care, hygiene, wound dressing, ambulation, just to have a hamburger at home, adequate pain management, basic functions. Remember, you are not fit for street, not fit for driving, and what about the work? So please take home. Information is not that simple. It's a simple message, but information is not simple. You hear what you want to hear. You listen to things you like. Be aware of the risk for misunderstanding, and I'm so sorry that I'm run over time. Thank you very much. We'll take at questions the at the end.